Hey, welcome back everybody, it's Don, and today on the channel, we're gonna be taking a look at the Nreal AR glasses. That's right, no VR today, we're gonna be doing some more augmented reality. Now, for those of you who watch the channel, you know I already got the pleasure of taking a look at Nreal's dev kit back in 2020 when I went to CES. And after that, they were kind enough to send me one so I could kind of play with it here in the studio and see if I could develop with it and show it to you guys, which I did in an earlier video that you'll find in my description. But today, we're gonna to be taking a look at their consumer kit. They were awesome enough to send me out one of these about three weeks ago, but truth be told, there still wasn't much I could do with it until last week when they finally released Nebula 2.0 Universal. Now, that came with a little bit of a drama because it really wasn't universal, okay? Lots of phones were left out, especially those of us here in the United States because they have not launched fully here in the US yet. They are only available fully through telcos in Korea, Japan, and Germany. So lots of developers here in the States were a little disappointed, but I gotta hand it to Unreal. They, they hit the ball right out of the park by 24 hours later coming to the Slack and saying, hey, developers, we believe in you guys. We're here for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and push out an update a little bit earlier than they wanted to that added tons more phone support by giving us the ability to turn off the check that says, is it a phone that is supported? So with that, all of a sudden, my Note 20 Ultra US version started working flawlessly, and I can't thank those guys enough for at least wetting our beaks a little bit and giving us a taste of what's to come. Now, with that, it's not perfect, okay? So I still can't add 2D apps from the Play Store. They've got some goofy telco restriction for that but at least we now have some sort of a usable UI OS, whatever you wanna call it, with Nebula 2.0. So today we're gonna to go ahead and dive into the box real quick, not much in there, but I'll show you guys what's in the box. We're gonna go ahead and test a few of the apps and show you the UI. So let's go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box and what's inside of it. And I say take a look at the box because man, I gotta tell you, I think it's pretty cool that they did this holographic stuff on the back. It just looks neat when the light catches it. Definitely just gets you excited right off the bat the minute you hold this box in your hand. So other than that, it is a pretty basic box, black on black in real logo here. Not a lot of stickering on it at all until you get to the side, which gives you a little bit of a con contents, but we're not here once again to talk about the box. You guys know I'm an old retailer though, so I love packaging. I don't know, I'm a box junkie. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the box and see what's in there, shall we? So there we go, vacuum seal is broken, and right there we get a little soft carrying case. So let's go ahead and remove that and we'll skip all the little stuff in the box for now because this is the star of the show. There you go. So there are the in real consumer glasses. So there are the glasses. You can see the cameras front facing on everything. Very, very nice packaging. So rest of the box looks like it just uh, contains probably some documentation here. Uh, yeah, it looks like a little documentation packet. Uh, it's going to give us our start guide, a, a nice little microfiber cloth, um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And uh, last but not least, looks like there's one more little compartment in here. And yes, there are the changeable nose bridges and the what they call VR shield. So you actually can 
put this on the front of the glasses and you can kind of turn it into a, a you know, three doff VR, like a la the old Gear VR, I guess. Uh, you know, I almost consider this, uh, I think my friend Eric Hartley coined that phrase, that this is like the Gear VR of AR. And uh, last but not least, it looks like they do also have the prescription insert here. So if you're like me, I've got my contact lenses in right now, but if you wear glasses, they are kind enough to uh, include this magnetic prescription insert that you can take and have your own prescription lenses fitted into. So that's it. That's all that's in the box, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get a nose piece put on these. And uh, obviously we'll have to switch cameras because I'm using my Note 20 to film with this. And we'll dive into Nebula and take a look at the UI. All right, so here we are. We've got Nebula 2.0 loaded up on the phone. And the first thing you're gonna see is, is we've got two options here. We've got the MR space and the air casting. Both of them have their pluses and minuses, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at each one individually. So the MR space obviously is where we're gonna be able to, as it says on the screen, explore the possibilities that mixed reality applications have to offer. So uh, they've got four apps that they are currently uh, uh, recommending here on the uh, the the Play Store, you've got the Ghost Hunter for in real demo. You've got Return to Base. You've got Styly and uh, Aaron AR. But for the moment, uh, we want to go ahead and make sure that our power saving mode is disabled so that we can in record um, and that everything is set correctly, which it is. So let's dive in. All right, so now we're in Nebula here and we can take a look at the UI. So across the top here, we've got our clock, which uh, unfortunately is set to the uh, military 100 minute clock here, not to my liking. Uh, and so far I have not found anywhere to change that. Uh, we've got our uh, signal meter, we've got our Wi-Fi signal meter, our battery meter. Uh, here we have the ability to switch to the air casting, which we will do here in a minute. Uh, we've got the follow mode, which basically just allows the uh, UI, you see if I look around, it stays in place with follow mode. It would actually follow me as I walk. We've got our brightness and we've got our volume because there are speakers in the uh, earpieces. So uh, here's where we can search for uh, apps or URLs. We've got our web bookmarks here, uh, productivity. I don't know how Netflix got in there, which it doesn't work anyway. Uh, then we've got all of these different AR demos. Uh, a lot of these came from my good friend, Eric Hartley. Uh, check out his channel. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. The guy is a tremendous wealth of knowledge, especially when it comes to this stuff. And I cannot thank him enough for all of his help over these last few months in helping me to get all of this working. So um, I did also, uh, with his help, I got some of the uh, demos from the actual dev kit. Um, so we've got those installed as well. Now, unfortunately, I am able to record here in the uh, UI, but the minute I leave this UI, the recording will stop. So we're going to have to rig up some sort of camera behind the glasses. Uh, that is unfortunate that they have not given us the ability to record fully in the glasses just yet. Uh, that would actually be up to each individual developer at this point, whether they want to build that recording feature into their apps. So I really, really, really implore Lore in real, um, as I implore all AR and VR companies, man, help us content creators out. Give us good options to show off your stuff. This is absolutely wonderful. It works very well. It gives me the ability to capture even 60 frame video. But I want to show the cool stuff. I don't want to show my audience just a UI here. So come on in real, figure it out that where I just hit record and it just stays recording until I tell it to stop. But 
that's not going to happen today. So for today, we're just going to go ahead and grab a few uh, web apps here. So, all right, there you have it. You see, I can uh, take the web app. I can zoom it in and out. I can make it smaller and bring it closer. And then when I've got it where I want it, I can pin it in space. Now, bring up the home page here and let's say I want to check my Instagram feed and I can do that as well as my good friend Sean. All right. And uh, my good friend Voodoo who got a little look at the yacht too. I'm so jealous, buddy. All right, Thomas, I can't wait. You know, they did a little tour of uh, the Netherlands and Germany and my friends Kaz and Cherry and my friend Thomas got to ride on the new chair, which we are also hoping to eventually get one in the studio uh, for you guys to see. But that's not today. So um, you can see I've got my apps pinned here. Now, uh, because I'm sitting here in the video, I'm not going to walk around or well, I guess I will. Uh, so we'll, we'll show you here the apps pin in space and I can walk around them. Um, they are uh, basically 2D web surfaces in a 3D environment here, and they absolutely look stunning in, in the glasses. Um, and, and I tell you, the image is nice and sharp. I mean, it really really looks good. So, you know, the, the big drawback of any AR glasses at this point, and I don't know if it comes off in the video, is you can see it is a very restricted field of view. We've got about a 52 degree field of view. All right. So, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, uh, for the web interface here. Uh, so we can bring up the, the home UI again. You can see my apps are still pinned exactly where I want them. If I want to move that, we're just going to move that over here, get that one over here. So there you have it. A uh, little motion blur when I move my head. Uh, tracking is still a little jittery. Um, definitely something that, that they've got to work on. But, you know, as I said earlier, this is literally the Gear VR days for, um, for uh, AR. I mean, it's still super, super early tech at this point. So, all right, I guess that's enough about the UI. Let's go ahead and uh, jump in and take a quick look at just a couple of selected apps before we finish out this video and give you my final thoughts. All right, so now that we've seen the UI in the MR space, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the air casting feature. So I do apologize at this point in the video for the super potato quality here, but I am actually having to hold a, a 1080p webcam up to the glasses and, and kind of try to hold both in my hand here so you can get the uh, illusion of what it is that I see. Uh, so, you know, once again, I implore the, the InReal dev team, guys, find a way, man. Give us an ability to record anything we want in these glasses without having developers have to build it into their apps. So enough said on that. All right, so air casting, what is it? It is literally just casting my phone screen to the uh, in real light glasses here. Um, it, it is fully functional. I mean, anything that you can do with your phone, you can definitely do in this screen. I have found that this is a really good way for watching Netflix. Uh, you know, basically it, uh, let's see here, I'm watching Arrow right now, and boom, there you go. I'm not going to go ahead and get into that because I don't want any copyright stuff going on in this video, but uh, you can definitely watch your Netflix that way. Um, you can pretty much, like I said, do anything that your phone is capable of. Now, it also has a secondary feature, which is the side screen, and that is really cool. I'm not gonna show it in this video today, but I actually did go driving around in my car using Google Maps that way, uh, because it just puts it over in your left eye, and the glass 
glasses are dark enough, it's just like wearing sunglasses outside. So that was pretty darn cool. So, all right, last but not least, let's go ahead and take a quick look um, at a few of the, uh, the AR demos here. So we're gonna jump back into the, uh, the MR space here and you know I was talking about that in the earlier now that was the internal recording here you can see the limitations of the field of view uh, this is this is filming all through the right eye um, so yeah all right so uh, there are four demo apps that were available and then I found uh, like I said uh, my friend Eric Hartley threw me a couple that he had found on the slack channel and then um, this one I found on the slack channel I thought it was really neat and I'm gonna go ahead and load it up uh, it is a, a quick demo of uh, a 3d mapping using uh, Bing maps and you can see you've got the You've got the, the, the models here that you can look at. You can really get down in and get close to them. I mean, it's just cool stuff. Go ahead and try to move it out of the way here. So I can get over here. And there we go. Get a little New York City going here. and boom there you go and you can move it around you can change the latitude and longitude so I thought that was a pretty cool little app I just wanted to show that real quick uh, we'll go ahead and exit back out uh, there we go it's kind of hard to do this when you don't have the glasses on um, and then you know there are a couple of other ones um, oops got a tracking error there um, so let's see here. We got the Ghost Hunter demo here. I thought this was really cool. Okay, recognize the floor. Don't cross the streams. Oh no. Gotcha. So kind of a wave shooter. Oh, I'm getting handed here, but then again, I'm not in the glasses. So, all right, there we go. So, you know, you get the gist of it. So I there you know there it is in a nutshell guys I, I'm I'm not gonna hold that webcam up anymore that was really making my hand cramp so again in real give us recording options please but final thoughts all right so AR it is cool okay don't get me wrong it is definitely cool but it is definitely early I mean this is still you know almost what I'd call DK2 stage if you were kind of equating this to the rise of consumer VR we saw six seven years ago it's not even consumer ready yet I know they are launching these in Korea and Japan and Germany they're about to launch them in the US I'm not so sold on this being a true rock-solid consumer product just yet 
with the exceptions of media consumption. Now, I, I will say I really enjoy watching movies uh, and television on these glasses. I mean, going and laying in bed and, and just flicking a big screen up on the ceiling, it is really cool. Taking them in the car, you know, on a trip is really cool. But is it $600 cool? That is that is the big question for places where you can actually purchase these already. And, you know, quite frankly, at this point, I am going to say no. Unless you are an enthusiast, an uber enthusiast, an early adopter, you know, it's 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 just the tech is not a hundred percent ready yet. It, it it still needs a little bit of time to mature. Now, with that said, if you are a developer, I you know I know the dev kits have been really hard to get, but you know now that they've opened up the Universal Nebula, it it works with a lot of phones. And you don't have to buy the full $1,100 dev kit. If you could get your hands on just a pair of glasses, you can develop on these. So, you know, for you, I would probably recommend these so that we start pushing that ecosystem. So we start getting better and cooler apps like the Ghost Hunter demo at the end. I didn't really get a chance to show you guys as much as I wanted to because like I said, by God, my hand was killing me trying to hold that webcam up behind these glasses. But... I really think the tech has legs. I think in the future, you know, it is going to be great. You've got lots of companies coming to the table now. I just I just read about Snapchat. They're, they're doing their own glasses now. I heard Niantic is about to do some glasses for Pokemon Go. Obviously, the big boy, Apple. Yeah, but you know, they're they're going to really, really take this space and run with it. So. In the next couple of years, I think we're really going to see a huge push for AR. But for right now, like I said, DK2 stage. But for me, all right, guys, that's going to do it. I, I am done for today. Thank you so much for coming by to check out what I did here on the channel today with AR instead of VR. And, uh, you know, come back for some more VR content. I'm definitely going to be doing some cool stuff coming up on the channel. You won't want to miss it. So if this was your first time coming by, you know what to do. Smash the subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified the next time I do something cool in virtual or augmented reality. For me, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one. This is Don signing off.